Is the screen presentation yep. visible? Yep. Yeah, yes. Okay, great. Thank you. All right, here we go. So um, today's session is all about how to archive student life in student organizations. Um, or my subtitle is how to keep those fancy bowler hats uh, for future generations, because I just love this picture over here. Um, it's of the Western Maryland College Irving Literary Society, and it's from 1894. And those guys' hats are just wonderful. Okay. So uh, the purpose of today's discussion, um, there's really three things that I'm hoping that we're gonna uh, get out of it together. Uh, the first is to talk about how collecting can benefit your groups um, and why preserving your club's histories is important. Um, I'm gonna give you some practical tips to get started with record collection and preservation um, if you're not doing it already. And then we're gonna discuss how the college archives can help support your organizations. So before we dive into all that, um, I just wanna go over a couple terms with you so that we're working from a shared vocabulary. Um, the first thing I wanna talk about is what is a record? Um, so what do I mean when I say record? It's really anything that your group produces that represents who you are and what you do. And these can really take a variety of different forms. Um, they can be something very formal like meeting minutes. Um, they can be photographs from different events that you've done. They can be flyers, advertising activities that you have, audio visual recordings, et cetera. So while we're talking about records, I just want you to kind of keep this corpus of materials in your mind um, and really think about the different things that you make um, in the sort of day-to-day -day activities of your clubs. So the second term that I wanna go over with you um, is what I mean when I say preservation. And very broadly, uh, preservation are just actions that we take that protect records for future use. Um, so I find that it's helpful to think about um, preservation as something that's being continually done. And it really helps to think of records um, like living things that kind of age and decay. So just like eating right and exercising throughout your life can help you stay healthy, there are things that we can do for records that can help them stay in good condition. And we're gonna talk about some specific examples of this later on in this presentation. So why is this important? Why should you bother with record preservation and collection at all? Um, and I really have two reasons for you. On a very practical level, it helps with keeping your information organized and findable when you need it. So let's say that you threw a really great event last year and you sort of outsourced to some local vendors um, and they were wonderful and you wanna work with them again. How do you know how to find their information? Um, is it on file somewhere? Can you get to it pretty easily? When you're collecting and preserving records, um, it, it helps make your information much more organized and findable when you need to get back to it right away. Another way that a record preservation can help your clubs is it can help clarify past decisions that your club has made. Um, so it helps to know if you ever need to go back and amend some of your founding documents, like say how the election of officers happens, how are those things put together in the first place? What was the purpose behind them? Um, it can really clarify some of the decision-making and help you inform your decisions going forward. All right, um, so Tanner's gonna put the first poll up for us now. Can you go ahead and do that, Tanner? Okay, um, so these answers are anonymous, so please feel free to answer honestly. Um, the question is, does your organization currently collect documents, objects, photographs, or other memorabilia from your events or activities. So go ahead and, and fill that out, please. Just give it another couple seconds here. Okay, I think that's everybody. Okay, so we have um, two people that said yes and one that said they were unsure. So that's great. We have some people who have um, got to start with this process already um, and and so that's wonderful. Hopefully some of the things that we talk about will be useful for you going forward. Let me fix it out of that. So um, to get us started, we've actually put together a website um, that I'm gonna show to, you, show to you guys here in just a second with just some tips about how to get started with record preservation, how to donate to the archives and put it all in one place on the archives website. Um, so if you need a refresher on anything we go over today, it's there for you already. So I'm gonna to navigate to that real quick. Oops, nope, not that. And there we go. Okay, so this is the library's main website page. Um, and to get to the archives website, 
you just go to this horizontal navigation bar here. It's the very last tab. We're going to click on that. This takes us to the archives website. Um, and I've put a link to the archiving student life guide that I've made for you guys. Um, it's here under quick links. It's number four where it says archiving student life. So you just click on that. And here's the guide. Pretty much everything that we were talking about earlier is here, uh, or we'll be talking about today is here for you um, for your reference. All right, so I'm gonna go back to my presentation. All right, so now we're gonna just get into a little bit of the nitty gritty. How do you get started with preserving your records? Um, and I have six tips here for do-it-yourself preservation. Um, and as we're talking about this, I want you to be aware that each organization is going to have different needs. These tips are just general advice that can be applied to most situations. But if you do have specific questions about certain materials that you're collecting or would like to collect, please feel free to reach out to me at any point. So the first bit of advice that I have for you um, is very simply just to keep all of your records in a single location that the entire group is aware about. Um, and this can be something as simple as a box or a folder. Um, it can be a designated notebook or a digital folder. The point is, is that scattered records are a lot easier to lose. Um, so you're taking just a very simple step towards preservation when you're making sure you know where your records are at all times. Another easy way to get started with pre preservation is just to keep your records organized. Um, this is, as we talked about with the vendor example, this is gonna make your information um, a lot easier to find when you need it. Uh, and the arrangement doesn't have to be very complicated. It can be as simple as keeping everything from one year in a folder together. Another easy way to get started with preservation is um, to designate a person to oversee the record collecting and to have a plan in place to transfer those responsibilities as members graduate. Um, and by doing this, you're making sure that knowledge isn't getting lost when people leave your organization. Another bit of advice that I have for student groups uh, is to label your documents with the who, the what, the when, and the where. You wanna identify who was involved, uh, you wanna describe what's happening, and you wanna list when and where it happened. Uh, and this is just really helpful for people who are looking for specific information within your records. And, and I find that it also can make your records a lot more engaging if you wanna share it on social media. You can tag past members because they're identified um, and you can give a little bit more context onto, uh, let's say what the photograph is, um, is showing. Another thing that you might consider as you get started with preservation um, is just keeping your physical records. And by physical records, I mean things like papers and photographs in a cool, dry and clean space. You wanna avoid exposing um, these items to lots of lights and you wanna avoid, or, yeah, and you wanna avoid storing them in places where they could get wet. Uh, having a good place to store physical records is the best, most efficient way to take care of these items. And finally, if you aren't collecting, just start doing it. Uh, it's a very imperfect process and it's gonna take some time to get used to. And again, it's really gonna vary widely between all of your clubs. So don't feel like you all have to be doing the, the exact same thing in the exact same way. Okay, so we've gone over some quick tips um, for preserving physical records, but I wanna touch on briefly how you might get started preserving digital records, because that's really gonna be a good chunk of what you guys are gonna be producing. Um, so I have here just four quick tips to get started with that. And the best thing is, is you really don't need much tech, text expertise to do these things. The first would just to, would be to be consistent in the file formats that you choose. And by file formats, I mean uh, those little extensions that are like doc or PDF, or if you got a photograph that's TIFF or JPEG. Um, so on that guide that we put together, the website, we do have some suggestions for you, uh, but generally you wanna stick with formats that are widely used and that you don't need specific software to run. Another tip for preserving digital records uh, is just to keep your digital files organized like you would your paper ones. Um, make sure that you're using folders and that you're labeling them, again, so you can find things easier. In addition, you wanna make sure that you're including plenty of information in file names so you can identify what they are later on. Um, anybody who's ever taken a picture knows that you have that auto naming for photos that's like IMG0001 and it tells you absolutely nothing about what the photograph actually is or what it's a picture of. So just take a few minutes to just rename those things um, and, and describe what they are. It's gonna make it a lot easier for you to preserve the content in the future. 
And finally, uh, just make sure that you're keeping multiple copies of your files in different locations, um, preferably in locations that aren't tied to a specific person, like someone's personal Google Drive account or something like that. Um, if possible, I suggest setting up a group, group Google Drive account. I think they have something like 15 gigabytes of free storage to get started with. So that's, that's a really great um, platform to use. Or you could buy an external drive. That's another good option as well. So, so far we've talked a lot about the steps that you and your groups as individuals can take to get started or improve upon your record collecting. Um, but I'm gonna turn now to talk a little bit about the, what the College Archives is, what I do as the archivist um, and how your group can donate to the archives if you so choose. So we're gonna come to the second poll. Um, so if Tanner, if you wanna go ahead and stick that up. Um, and this is just asking a little bit about what experience you might have with the archives. So uh, whenever you want, go ahead and respond to that. And this one is multiple options, so you can click more than one. Give it just an, another few seconds here. Okay, thank you. Okay, so it looks like we have a variety of experience with the archives here today. Um, so that's great. Um, hopefully you all can take something a little bit different out of uh, what we're gonna talk about next. Thank you for answering that. Okay, so what are the, what are the archives and what is it that we do? So the College Archives collects and preserves records related to the history of McDaniel College and we make them accessible to a variety of different parties. These are oftentimes students or visitors or other community members that just have an interest in the college. And the materials we, can let, we collect uh, can take a lot of different forms. Uh, we have records from different offices and departments from across campus. For example, we have uh, records from pretty much every tenure of the different presidents that the college has had. We also collect student newspapers and yearbooks. We have, I think, a complete run of both of those, uh, both of those materials. And we also collect a lot of alumni memorabilia, photographs, scrapbooks, things of that sort. Um, and we try to collect pretty broadly because it all gives a different slice of the college's history. And we wanna make sure that we're presenting a, ro a much of a robust picture as we are able. So my role as the archivist is essentially to know everything there is to know about these records, how they're organized, what needs to be done to preserve them, how they relate to one another, so that when people have questions about something that's happened in the college's history, I can help them find the information that they need. So for example, last fall, the Office of Communications and Marketing reached out to me um, looking for information about then Senator, now President Joe Biden's visit to campus in 1985. Um, and I was able to find a newspaper article that described his visit uh, and also a photograph of, from when he came to campus, which was pretty cool. So that's just kind of an example of the, the sort of day-to-day -day, uh, activities that I do as the archivist. Since it's my job to know the, the records really well, I also know where we have gaps and where there isn't a lot of information about an event or a particular time on campus. And student clubs are a really big one for us and that leaves a hole in the history of the college. And because we have that gap, we are very interested in receiving records from your groups. So I'm gonna talk a little bit now about why you might wanna to donate to the archives um, and how you would go about doing that. But before I do, I want to be very clear that your clubs don't owe us anything. If you don't wanna to donate to the archives, that's absolutely fine. We are still here to be a resource for you, however you need. So why might you donate to the archives? Uh, probably the number one reason is that you can just let someone else take care of your stuff. Um, as I said, I'm trained in how to uh, organize and preserve and make accessible records. Um, so when you're giving it to me, it's just one less thing that you have to worry about doing. Um, but you're also still going to have access to these records going forward. Just because they come to the archives doesn't mean that you can't come back and revisit them. I can make them accessible to you um, on whatever terms that we agree upon. Another reason that you might consider donating to the archives um, is that your documents are going to be available to a wider audience. So that means that your group's work and events and activities that you've hosted can help inform new histories about the college. So I wanna pause for just a second and really think about this idea of what it means that records that come to the archives are now available to the public. 
we talked about how that can be a really positive thing um, in, the, in that it's informing new histories and more people can kind of see the cool things that you're doing. But there are also some risks that come along with that. And I just want to touch on those really quickly. Um, so one of the things that the archives does, uh, we have some blanket precautions to preserve individual privacy when records come in to the archives. Um, so we automatically restrict access to records um, that have any kind of personal, personally identifiable information. So this can be things like names and addresses, um, anything that might be related to academic records like grades, financial information, um, letters of reference, recommendation, things like that. These type of records are going to get sorted when they come into the archives and then they get marked that they're going to be restricted. So when someone else comes in and they want to see your records, uh, we would hold them back and we wouldn't give them out right away. If someone wanted to look at the restricted materials, um, our current policy is to ask the donating group, which would be your organization, for permission before any access is given to them. So you would always be in the conversation um, about what is going on and who is looking at these records um, with the restricted material. That said, unless there are other restrictions in place on the records, these records are open for anyone to look at. So you want to make sure that all of your members are on board to donate before you donate anything to the archives. Um, and you want to be aware of some of these risks, especially if your records document forms of activism. Um, Tanner is going to drop a link in here for us uh, from a group called the Blackivists. Um, and these are just a couple of tips about uh, how to donate records that document activism um, and some of the steps that you can take to protect yourselves and your group members. Um, so I don't want this to scare you off entirely if you are interested in donating. There are so many different ways that we can tackle your concerns together and I'm happy to work with your groups one-on-one -on -one to find a solution that's gonna work for you and is also gonna work for the archives. Okay. So how do you donate to the archives? What does the process look like? Um, and really the first thing uh, you would wanna do is just to talk to me. Uh, and there are so many different ways that you can do this. You can send me an email and I'm gonna have my contact information on, on the last slide of this presentation. Um, so that will be available. Uh, you can call the archives office uh, and starting in the fall, you can come visit me in my office. I'm on the second floor of Hoover, uh, room 210. I'm there from 8.30 to 3.30 every day. So come visit me, I'm there. Uh, but we also have, none of this is appealing to you, we've also put together um, a little donation form, which I'm going to show you real quick. We are back on the uh, McDaniel College Archives website on that home page. And this third link here under Quick Links where it says Donate to the Archives, if you click on that, this pulls up a donation interest form. And this is also linked on that Archiving uh, Student Life web guide that we showed you earlier. It's there in a couple of different places, so you can access it from there. Um, but this is just gathering some very quick information about uh, what type of materials you might be interested in donating to the archives. But I wanted to point out that there is also an option to request a consultation with the archivist right there, specifically for student groups. Um, so if you didn't want to bother doing email or phone call or whatever, this is just a quick way to um, get in touch with me. I go back to my presentation now. Here we go. Okay, so after you've talked to me, um, the next part of the process, uh, you wanna start organizing your records. You wanna start thinking about what you wanna donate um, and make copies of those records if need be. Uh, then you would make a list of the items you need to donate. Um, that's really helpful for me. It would help the whole organizing and processing uh, process go a little bit quicker and it would make your, your items uh, available faster. Um, and then you would complete and submit a DITA gift. And I'm not gonna spend too much time today going over the details behind a DITA gift because there's so many different things that need to happen before we get to that point. However, I want you to be aware that in most circumstances, donating to the archives includes transferring the intellectual and physical ownership of the materials to the college. So it's a bit like donating clothes to a thrift store. Um, once it's out of your hands, you really generally don't go back and try to repossess it. That said, um, you can still have access to your materials anytime you want. Um, we don't wanna hoard your group's things, but we wanna help you take care of them and find ways to share your work with a wider audience. So after you've completed a deed of gift um, and that's all been agreed upon, the records would then be transferred to the archives. Um, so at this point, we would work out a way to physically get the materials to the archives. And then the last step would just to be um, to make plans for future transfers to the archives. 
uh, we hope that you'll keep working with us because your clubs are going to keep making new records. All right, so sum up time because I've gone over a lot of information today. Um, but if you can only take away three things from this presentation, this is what I hope you'll remember. And number one, collecting records is really important. It helps support your group's day to day activities and it helps preserve your history. Number two, anytime is a good time to start collecting, um, and there are some really easy steps that you can take to get started in that process. And number three, the archives is here to help. Um, reach out to me at any point with any questions. I'm glad to be a resource for you. All right, so this is the promise contact and resource slides. Um, my email's here. My office phone is here. Uh, there's another link to that Student Life website that we mentioned. Um, but other than that, that's the end of the presentation portion of our uh, webinar today. So I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen. All right. Um, so if anyone has any questions or things that they want to talk about, this, uh, this would be the time. I just thought that was super interesting and I might um, see if I can find a way to donate some things because my organization dies with me. I will be the last president of German club. So that's really sad. Um, yeah. But I'm also glad that you're thinking about donating uh, to the archives. It'd be a good way for your club to, to live on. Yeah, um, since the German major is going away. Right. And they made that decision two years ago, but it's like now my class is the last one of German majors. So mm. I, just, I just like technically there's no reason why German club couldn't go on, but I just don't think that we're gonna have enough people next year after I graduate. Right, that's understandable. But I'll look into seeing if I can find um, old photos of German American day and such to add to the archives. That would be wonderful. We'd love to have it. I can understand the feeling, Anna, just because personally ACC is already a small club. That's a culture club on campus. And I'm just worried, like, after I graduate and after two years, um, they'll kind of just crumble with everything else. Um, so I'll probably also see if I can find some pictures to send it. Um, I know personally ACC has all our documentations and our pictures online. Hmm, okay. Is there an online archive that we could send those to? Or do we have to, like, have to go to copies to send the archive? That's a good question. How are you storing them online? Right now, we just have our documents, our PDFs, roster, club events, stuff like that. We have all those on the um, ACC's um, Google Drive that's connected with the school. Oh, okay, okay. Um, yeah, so we would have to work out a transfer because we don't have a like an official repository for digital mm -hmm. materials right now. I'm sort of okay. working on building that out as we speak, um, and we're looking at different platforms to put those into. So we would probably need to have a longer conversation um, of how we would move those things over and I yeah but I would be very I would be very interested in getting in any materials yeah um depending on what happens next year with the club and how many people we do get I can probably send some copies over yeah that would be um, great if that would be great I'll I'll talk about that with my um the rest of my exec boards as well sounds good yeah and I think that that's that's a really good point about you know the um, that donating to the archives can also ensure that your group lives on after you. Um, I know that when I was, uh, I started a, a club when I was in um, undergrad, it was a Harry Potter club. And um, I'm pretty sure that it doesn't exist now. And so, you know, it would have been really great for that to have lived on after I left. And then even, you know, the organization that I was a part of that did live on um, and has been around for a long time, for like 40, 50 years on campus, it was still, when I became the historian, it was still really difficult to, you know, I would be trying to find posts for, um, or pictures or something for um, like a throwback Thursday thing or, you know, getting in touch with our, our alumni and connecting with them. And it was just really difficult because there wasn't, we had no set way of keeping track of even our most basic records, like our constitution and, you know, list of members and that kind of thing. So 
it definitely would have made life a lot easier to have that. But yeah, and if you um, if you know of any other any other groups that weren't here today or um, maybe weren't at the session tomorrow, definitely let them know. We are going to. Um, I said that we were recording this, so we will include the recording on that archiving student life page. So if you know of other student groups who um, might think that this is interesting and get some use out of this, definitely let them know. Are there any other uh, thoughts or questions? I'm um, just with the archives. I'm not sure if this is discussed or not, but I was thinking like, is there an organization system within like a specific archive or like all, all those documents like organized by like a certain date or like by certain document type that I can ask? Okay, so do you mean like as the archives as well? As a whole, but also kind of like as if you have like one club's archive, like is it like in different sections organized or how does that work? Yeah, okay, so the students have pretty much our own organized and they're going to organize whether it's the main thing or the club's packages and then not that it's so large or anything like that. So in the group's group, they would like to other it wouldn't be together like we wouldn't be mixing your materials together okay i'm just curious thank you so much okay that's a good question all right uh well if there are no other um sort of final thoughts here why don't we do the last poll uh and then we'll wrap up Can I ask if you mean when you start collecting records, like putting them in the archives or like actually collecting materials for like just in general? Yeah, just collecting uh, materials in general. Yeah. Making sure. Yep. Awesome. So it looks like you're both interested in uh, in starting to collect records now. I know um, some of you have already started doing that and that's wonderful. It makes me so happy to hear that. Yeah, I know like for the club before, before I um, got into the presidency, a lot of our records were not really where I thought they were. And so I'm glad I was able to, at least this year, get like an account of like how much money we use and how much is that for that. So I thought that was a great way to at least start if like a new year of a club just to figure out, okay, how much we use for the year, what's going on, what events are we planning, all that. Yeah, exactly. No, that's a great example. And that's a great example where having like a good system in place already can make that transition way easier. All right. Well, thank you both so much for uh, taking time out of your afternoon to be here. We really appreciate it. Um, and again, if you have any questions at any point, uh, don't hesitate to, to reach out to me or to Tanner. Thank you.